So in this lecture, we're going to discuss a general method for taking a binary classifier and improving it. This could be any classifier, and the name that we give this technique is called boosting. Okay, so let's refresh our memory what we discussed at the end of last, last lecture, uh, the idea of bagging classifier. And as we're going to see, boosting is uh, similar to this idea. So we assume that we have uh, labeled data where we have uh, x1, y1 through xn, yn. Each x is in some space, script x, and each y is a corresponding label, uh, plus one or minus one, depending on the class of x. Then, to generate uh, these bagged classifiers, what we do is we first sample a bootstrap uh, data set. And we do this capital B times. Each uh, bootstrap data set is, uh, has n data points in it, so the same size as the original data set. However, to construct this data set, we uh, sample uniformly with replacement. So, the, so for a particular uh, sample, we'll pick x i, y i with probability 1 over n. And then the next time, we'll pick it again with the same probability. So many of these labeled data pairs are going to repeat in our bootstrap data set, and some won't appear at all in, in a particular uh, bo uh, bootstrap data set. Then for each of these uh, script Bs, what we do is we learn a classifier, call it F sub B. And so we now have capital B classifiers, where each one is learned on a specific bootstrapping of the data set. Then we define our classification rule, so call that uh, F bag, the bagging of the uh, classifiers, to be simply the sign of the sum of the individual classifiers that we learn. So we learn capital B different classifiers, each on its own bootstrapped view of the data set. We then evaluate for a point x naught, some new point, the classification on each of those, uh, using each of those classifiers, and then we simply take a majority vote to say what the bag classifier would say. So in this sense, these uh, classifiers form a committee, and they're each voting on the label, and the majority vote is uh, the label that the data point is going to end up being assigned. Boosting is a, uh, a development of this idea. So the, the motivation is that how can we take a uh, mediocre classifier, a really mediocre classifier, so a classifier that doesn't do much better than random guessing even, and how can we take many of these weak classifiers, so weak again means bad accuracy, but a little bit better than random guessing, and boost them so that the sum uh, of these individual classifiers gives a very accurate and very good prediction of the label. So here is uh, a schematic, a high-level picture. The next two slides have high-level pictures of what boosting is doing. And then we're going to go into detail to really discuss what this method is. But at a high level, think of uh, bagging in this way, where at, we have our training data set here, our, our set of training data. And then for each of the classifiers that we learn, we bootstrap a new data set from the original training sample. So we bootstrap the training data to get a, 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 another data set of the same size, where we have some repeats of the data and some data is not appearing in a bootstrap sample, and we learn our classifier. And we do this many, many times, and then we sum the results of these classifiers. So boosting at a very high level is almost the same, but different in a very crucial way. So what boosting does is it first creates a weighted sample of our data set to learn a classifier. And then, given this weighted sample, it generates a new weighted sample. So it's not pulling from the original training sample, it's, it's pulling from the weighted sample of the previous round of, of classification to, to generate a new data set for which we get a new classifier. And so if we want to pull this back a little bit more to see what, what the underlying uh, idea of boosting is, and again, we'll discuss this in more detail uh, next. But what we have is our training sample. We then generate a weighted sample from that uh, training set. So think of this kind of like bootstrapping. We then classify that weighted sample. 
and get now two outputs. We get a classifier, so this is the same as with bagging, but we also get uh, some number alpha that, uh, that is associated with this classifier. And we'll see what that is in a minute. Then, based on how we do with this classifier, we get some sort of an, uh, an error weight, epsilon, and now we feed that into creating a second uh, subsample of, uh, sample of our data set. So we, we're basically taking how we classify at a given round and then combining it to get a new weighted uh, data set. But the key thing is that the output is a sequence of classifiers plus an additional number alpha. This is a real number alpha, one, two, and three. And now our boosted classifier is going to have almost the same form as the bagging classifier, where we make our decision at round t now, and we weight that decision by this alpha term that's associated with the teeth classifier. And then we sum those up and make our prediction based on the sign of the sum. Okay, so let's uh, look at the actual algorithm in some detail now, and then we'll analyze it uh, in the second half of this lecture. So here is uh, the Adaboost algorithm. This is the most famous version of boosting. There are many developments of the idea. This is the, the basic one. And what we're going to discuss is uh, what's called the sampling version of this Adaboost algorithm. So here, again, we have n labeled uh, data points in our training set, x1, y1 through xn, yn, where each x is again in some arbitrary space, and each y is a binary label plus one or minus one. Then what we're going to have is an n-dimensional weight vector that's going to change with each uh, iteration, or sometimes they're called rounds, of boosting. So to start out, we're going to say the weight vector at the first iteration, so this subscript is saying what iteration we're at. The weight vector on the ith data point is uh, 1 over n. So this is like a probability distribution on my data, and I initialize it to be uniform, the same exact distribution that we uh, use in bagging. But now, for each iteration, uh, this distribution is going to change, and so we'll see how that happens. So for iteration t, a particular iteration, what we do is we sample a bootstrap data set of size n according to the distribution wt. So in the first iteration, we sample a bootstrap data set of size n using a uniform distribution on our data. So that's the idea from bagging. However, at iteration t, this distribution on the data might be different. And so whatever the distribution on our data set is at iteration t, we sample n times from that to construct a uh, bootstrap sample bt. Then we learn a classifier at iteration t using the data in bt. So this is exactly the same thing as was done in bagging. The only difference is that the way that we constructed this data set was different because it's not necessarily with a uniform distribution. So that's the key difference. Another key difference is that after we construct this, uh, this classifier, before we can go to the next iteration, we need to first uh, decide how do we update this weight uh, probability distribution on our data. And also we have to get these alphas that I've discussed previously that are used in the classification. So the way we do that is we have a classifier that we learn at iteration t using the data in b. Uh, subscript T. We then calculate the probability of error at iteration T according to the distribution on the data at iteration T. So what that's saying is that the error at iteration T is going to be equal to the sum of all of the probability weights on the data that are misclassified according to the classifier that we've learned at only at iteration T. So we learn FT from the data in BT we then evaluate that classifier at all n data points in our original data set. And if our classifier gets it wrong, then we include that probability of that observation and sum up those uh, misclassified weights. So notice that we're summing the weights only on the misclassified data according to the classifier that we learn at iteration t. Then 
we construct or we calculate this this term alpha t uh, to be one half times the log of one minus the error divided by the error. So why this is the case will become clear later. For now, just uh, it's important to realize that we take this epsilon that we calculated, and we then perform this function to get alpha uh, for the teeth iteration. Next, what we do is we update the weights for iteration t plus 1 on each of the data points, on each of the end data points. And so to do that, we first take the original weight at iteration t on the ith data point, which is this term here. We then multiply it by a term e to the minus alpha t times yi times the classification of the ith data point using the teeth classifier. So this is ft. This is the classifier we learned in this current iteration. We classify the, t, uh, the ith data point. That gives a, zero, uh, a plus or a minus 1. We multiply that by the class by alpha t, which we've construct, uh, calculated this way, and then update uh, wt minus, uh, the value of the weight at t plus 1 for the ith data point like this. And then because we want to turn that into a probability weight, we simply normalize. So we do this many times, capital T times, where T is arbitrary, but large. And then we get out of this uh, T pairs, capital T pairs of uh, classifier and its associated weight alpha. And then for a new data point, the boosted classifier is equal to the sign of each individual class classifier's prediction weighted by alpha for that particular classifier. So we sum that up, and then again it's like a majority vote, except it's a majority weighted vote in this case, and then we take the sign, that's our final classification.